In our Sublimation for Beginner series, we're going to explain some of the aspects of sublimation printing. Today, we're going to start out slowly with what is sublimation and eventually get to all the equipment needed and dialing in settings for your equipment. Since this is the first video in the series, let's cover what is sublimation. In scientific terms, sublimation is the transition of a substance from a solid state to a gas state, bypassing the liquid state altogether. You may be thinking, wait, I'm trying to find out about sublimation printing, and yes, that is what we'll be covering today, but I wanted to explain why it's called sublimation. Also, if you ever hear it referred to as dye sublimation, it's the exact same process. Basically, the printer puts down a special dye sublimation ink. The thing that makes this ink different than standard printer ink is how it reacts to heat and pressure. Once heated, the ink forms a permanent bond with its polyester polymers at a molecular level to create permanent graphics that are embedded into the surface of the material. Next, we'll review how does sublimation work. Sublimation is a two-step process. First, images are printed with a sublimation printer in reverse with sublimation ink. This will look very odd at first, but you will get used to it. I usually place the printed paper near the heat press for about 30 seconds just to make sure the ink's dry, then it reduces some of the smearing and such. Once you get the image printed and dried, you can carefully place the image where it's going to be on the final product and tape it so it's secured. When you're first starting out, you'll want to make sure that you tape it. That way you reduce possible movement and potential ghosting as much as possible. At this point, it's time to apply the heat. The sublimation process usually begins around 320 degrees Fahrenheit. You'll definitely want to set your heat press higher than that because not everything transfers heat that reliably. I personally recommend anywhere from 375 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit to start out. The time you're pressing for will greatly depend on how conductive the material is you're sublimating. For license plates, 60 to 75 seconds is just fine. For stone light slates like ceramic that aren't as conductive to heat, they take a little longer to heat up and may take several minutes to press. Once you're done heating the pieces, it's time to get it out of the press. Please keep in mind that the material is very hot, so please use heat-resistant gloves. And make sure to get the paper off as fast as possible without rubbing against the uh, substrate. I prefer to use like almost like a tearing motion where you just kind of rip the paper off and try to avoid contact with the surface as much as you can. Because any any remaining ink can uh, double print the image and it'll look like a, a, give it like a ghosting effect. And on a lot of things, it'll look pretty bad. I usually just tear a corner off and go with it. What do I need to get started with dye sublimation? To get started, all you'll really need on the basic level is a dye sublimation printer, dye sublimation ink, a heat press, and transfer paper. And you'll also need something to sublimate. Um, this is where something like Walmart or Dollar Tree will come in handy. You can go to Dollar Tree and get some of the $1 printable microfiber towels, and that'll give you four for a dollar to practice on. Alternatively, you can go to Walmart and have them cut you some 100% polyester fabric to practice on. Um, that's a very cost-effective and easy way to practice sublimation. So, what all products can you use sublimation on? While it's impossible for me to list all the possible items that can use dye sublimation printing, here's some of the more popular ones. You can do t-shirts, mouse pads, coffee mugs, cell phone cases, bathing suits, socks, hats, glass mugs, glass plates, license plates, sheets of aluminum and steel, canvas, pillows, clipboards, fabric, banners, handbags, puzzles, and much, much more. What are the pros and cons of dye sublimation? First, we'll view the pros. The first main pro of dye sublimation is the fact that you can achieve high quality, color rich designs with very little effort once you get your equipment dialed in. In addition, the images will never fade, crack, or peel when using the correct substrate as they're technically part of the image at a molecular level. The third thing is it's very, very versatile. You can print on everything from coffee mugs to flat aluminum to t-shirts and a whole other range of materials as well as make your own substrates. Next, we'll review the cons. The main drawback to dye sublimation is the upfront cost of equipment. A good sublimation printer can set you back between a few hundred and several thousand dollars. For an updated equipment list on which printers are best at the moment, feel free to check out the equipment recommendations on my channel. I usually have an updated printer video most of the time. Um, next, it requires special ink and paper. 
that isn't exactly, it's not expensive, but it's not cheap. The third drawback of dye sublimation is the fact that it only works on certain materials. The ink is designed specifically to bond to polyester, so therefore you wouldn't be able to sublimate on things like cotton. The fourth thing, and this may be, this is, this may be even be debatable, is the fact that it's not really efficient for bulk order compared to a process like screen printing. On pieces of 20 or more, some other printing methods may be faster and more efficient. So, why should you choose dye sublimation? For one, the ability to be creative is unmatched by any other printing method. There's just so much you can easily do with it. You can literally print just about anything you can think of on anything you can think of. The second point, once you get everything set up and dialed in, it's surprisingly easy and cost effective to do stuff. And number three, it's fun. If you found this video helpful, feel free to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Over the next few weeks, I'll be uploading more Sublimation for Beginners videos to help complete this series. Also, feel free to check out the Facebook group, the newsletter, the Patreon page, and some other videos.